Paul said in verse 13, why are you weeping and breaking my heart? I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And verse 14 says, and when he would not be convinced or dissuaded, we gave up and said, the Lord's will be done. Now, this is important because you will, if you haven't already experienced in life, that sometimes it may be hard to discern the will of the Lord. Is it your voice? Is it somebody else's voice? Is it the Lord's voice? And if it's the Lord's voice, is he speaking through a prophet? And what is the prophecy? Because there are different types of prophecies. Is it foretelling? Is it foretelling? We'll distinguish between the two in a moment. But let's first answer the question, was Paul being disobedient? And I think we have to recognize, first of all, that Paul was not being disobedient. Because the word of God says, let's go to Acts chapter 9, verse 16, he was very clear what the Lord had told him. Why was he clear? Because that was when God saved him and called him to the very calling on his life. Let's go there, Acts chapter 9, verse 16. And you should know that this is not being shared with you just as a history lesson, but it's really how do you determine the will of the Lord and the voice of the Lord? And if you're on that stream or even in-house here, if you would like to hear a teaching, because I've taught on this many times and I've noticed that I've done it once every year because it's always been an interesting topic, interesting not just for me, but for the people of God. I remember when I was called to, uh, to the pastorate and I was unsure of what God was calling me to. And in the process of trying to be clear, I, in the church home that I was part of, I started a class because I was one of the teachers at the, at the church, and uh, I taught a class on how to know the will of God. They didn't know that I was trying to find out the will of the Lord for my own life. And how many know when you preach and teach, you're teaching to yourself as well? But I put the advertisement out to the church that I was part of, and 45 people signed up for the class. So I knew that I hit pay dirt. This was a topic that was of great interest. It was 13 weeks. And at the end of that 13th week, I was clear what God was doing with my life. And many people uh, said they were blessed. I said that to say this. If you would like to learn a little bit more about the will of the Lord, then why don't you drop a note on that stream uh, or send a note to me here at the church or drop a note if you're in the sanctuary now and say, and say, yes, I would like to learn about how to know the will of the Lord, how to hear the voice of God. But back to our lesson. I told you to go to the ninth chapter, did I not? Go to the 16th verse. Let's go a little bit up because I want you to get the context. Remember, God used a man by the name of Ananias. Verse 13 says, Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this, of this man how much evil he hath done to the saints at Jerusalem. Ananias was very concerned about associating himself with him, let alone helping him. And here he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all the uh, them that call on thy name. Verse 15 said, But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. It's interesting to note that the one group that Paul loved the most was the group that received him the least. 
And that's that third group, the children of Israel. Isn't it interesting that God knew exactly what he called Paul to do? Because notice the first group he put in the list before the Gentiles. And here it is, verse 16. For I will show him how much or how great, which means many things, he must suffer for my name's sake. Turn to the 20th chapter in this same book. We're simply lifting up the fact that Paul was not being disobedient. Paul heard clearly what God had told him. And you're seeing the scriptures that support it. 